I'm joined by Mike Worth, Chevron CEO. He joins us from the phone uh, from California on the day when he walked away from the deal to buy Anna Darko with a $1 billion breakup fee. Mike, good to see you. Stock is popping today. Congratulations on that move. Thanks, Alex. It's good to talk to you. So talk to me. Why did you walk away? Well, look, this is a win for Chevron and for our shareholders. We come out of the deal with a billion dollars. We're going to return that to our shareholders with a higher buyback. And, uh, you know, winning in any environment doesn't mean winning at any cost. In, in a commodity business, cost and capital discipline always matter. And an increased offer would have eroded value to our shareholders and diminished returns on our capital. This was, this was a good opportunity, but it wasn't a necessity for Chevron. And, and we're not desperate to do a deal. So, uh, so, so we come out of this feeling very good. Does that mean you think that Occidental overpaid? Well, I, 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 can't, uh, I can't comment on uh, how they look at things. I'll simply say we have no intention to do an acquisition unless it's an exceptionally good one. So what was so good about Anadarko for you? And is there another company that can help replicate that in any way? Look, we, we had a beautiful fit between our asset base and Anadarko's. Strong Permian positions that were very complementary, strong position, Deepwater Gulf of Mexico, LNG. Uh, we, had, uh, we had great uh, industrial logic and very real synergies behind it. And the deal that was agreed by both companies we think was good for the shareholders of both companies. Um, at the uh, levels that it's moved to, uh, we can no longer see it that way. W when you look at other things, uh, I'll, I'll simply say, uh, you know, we have a tremendous position and, uh, and organic opportunities to grow our business for uh, a long time into the future. So uh, we don't have a need to do anything unless it's exceptionally good, and we're only going to invest in the highest return opportunities. Well, I'm glad you brought up the fact that there were a lot of synergies, because Anna Darko clearly liked your deal better for for a long time. Did Anna, Anna Darko come back to you and say, please make another bid? Look, we've had discussions with, with Anna Darko throughout, and, uh, and they have handled themselves and I think negotiated in, uh, in, in very good faith and handled themselves very well. Uh, lots of respect for, for their company and their leadership. Um, and, and we've had detailed discussions. We had begun integration work, uh, mm -hmm. so, so we were working very collaboratively with them. And, uh, and ultimately, uh, I think both of us are disappointed that we can't put this deal together. Um, and, uh, and, and that's where we left it. You mentioned that there were so many synergies outside of the Permian, where for Oxy, it's really just the Permian synergy. Uh, we can see Occidental selling off assets left and right. Uh, would you be interested in buying the Gulf of Mexico assets that, uh, from Anadarko that will now belong to Occidental? Uh, you know, I, I, would, I would view those the way I, I view everything else, which is if it's the right asset at the right price and the right fit, that's something that we would consider. Uh, but, uh, you know, look, this was, a, this was a nice deal because we could bring the two companies together. We could create synergies out of that. And, uh, and when you're integrating an entire system, uh, you've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of value you can create. And so picking off individual assets one at a time, uh, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, we would take a look at that, but, uh, uh, you know, I would over, uh, overestimate how much appetite we might have there. Well, fair. And, you know, and you really put the money where your mouth is today when you said we're going to do that uh, buyback. We're going to increase it by 25 percent, which says that we see more value than in our stock than in just like going out and making a random acquisition. It, was that buyback, though, just because you got that $1 billion breakup fee, or is it structural and more permanent? Well, our commitment to capital discipline is very real, and our commitment to shareholder returns is very real. Uh, we come out of this deal with a billion dollars that we, we didn't expect to have, and I think it's right to return that to our shareholders through a buyback. And uh, we're operating from a position of tremendous strength. We've mm -hmm. got the lowest net debt in our industry. We've got the lowest cash break even. We're generating strong cash flow today, and we would expect to sustain this rate of share buybacks in any reasonable price environment. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, the clear message is we're returning the cash uh, out of this transaction to our shareholders, and we have such confidence in our portfolio through the price cycles that, that we intend to uh, continue to buy back shares uh, at that rate. Uh, Mike, what's a reasonable price environment? 
We, you know, we, we've seen uh, in, in just the last few years prices in the 30s and prices over $100. Those are extremes. Uh, you know, we've seen prices uh, in recent times in the 50s and the 60s. I think, you know, anything that moves in and around that, and and, and certainly, uh, you know, for short periods of time, you can be outside of that band. Uh, but uh, you know, prices that are plus or minus where we are today, we might be in a little bit of the higher end of what uh, most people would look at as the longer term price environment. So it's it's the range we've seen over the last year or two. I would say, you know, we can certainly sustain this buyback through those kinds of prices. Uh, we've been listening on Bloomberg Radio and watching on Bloomberg Television uh, to Mike Ward, the CEO uh, of Chevron, uh, is speaking also about sort of the criticism of big oil at some point comes to the fact that, guys, you got to replace your reserves, you got to make some acquisitions. Uh, at what point, if at any, do you feel like that becomes a little bit more necessary uh, in the future? Look, we have uh, we have nearly 70 billion barrels of resource that we've captured. We produce about a billion barrels per year, so we have a very deep inventory of resource. We're always looking to add to that if it's high quality resource that will compete for investment within our queue. But we've got a really strong portfolio, and it doesn't make sense to acquire something if we we can't invest in it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in a capital intensive commodity business, and we always have to remember that how we allocate and execute. Our capital program determines who wins and it determines who loses. And we intend to stay very disciplined in how we allocate capital and uh, only invest in the highest return opportunities. Uh, I mean, and, and that's capital discipline over the last few years has been rewarded, whether you're Psychonico, that was the first to kind of make that jump, clearly today with your stock uh, jumping on this news as well. Um, at what point do you feel like investors are going to demand something else other than capital discipline? Is it an oil price? Is it an oil environment? Is it a supply crunch? What, what, what's your read on that? Well, I think our investors are, are, are pretty smart uh, about our industry, and, and they're looking for uh, they're looking for steady, solid returns. Uh, they want to see a strong dividend. We've increased our dividend payout uh, rate for 32 consecutive years, and uh, and our and our, uh, our investors really value that. They look for. Uh, a disciplined approach to uh, a commodity business and the ability to steadily return income to shareholders, and that's what we're committed to. So the fact that, you know, that without this deal, you're lagging behind Shell and Exxon in terms of output, what, what do you say to that? Well, it's not about being uh, bigger than anybody else mm -hmm. or as big as someone. The goal here is to deliver stronger returns uh, out of your portfolio and to ensure that you share those returns with your investors. And, and so size uh, size and scale uh, matter only to a point. Yeah. Uh, execution and uh, and delivery is truly what investors are looking for. Uh, the, the conversation all about the Permian is, you know, who's going to wind up buying Endeavor? It's the privately owned pure plane the Permian. What about Pioneer? What about Concha? What about Diamondback? That's what everyone's talking about. From what you said, though, it seems like a pure play is not something you'd want to do. That what you liked about Anadarko was the fact that it had branches in many different spots, which we don't have that much anymore uh, in the Permian. Would that be accurate? Well, look, there's a lot of good companies in the, in the Permian, and if you do an acquisition, pay a premium, uh, you need to be able to do more with uh, with their assets than, than than they were doing. You need to find synergies that uh, that help to pay for the premium, and, um, and and so those are you know those are very real considerations. Our our Permian, we've got over 2.2 million acres in the Permian. Uh, last year, we produced about 300,000 barrels a day on average, in just five years. 2023, we will be producing over 900,000 barrels a day out of the acreage we have today without an acquisition and simply running the same number of rigs that we're running today. So that's a tripling of production in just five years. Uh, we don't need to do anything in the Permian unless it's really value adding. Uh, you, in the meantime, you got $74 billion in cash and unused shares. You feel like it's burning a little bit of a hole in your pocket, Mike? You can never feel that way in our industry, Alex. You've got to uh, you've got to look at the downside on uh, the price cycle. You've got to look at uh, uh, steady and uh, well-executed capital investments, and uh, you can never let money burn a hole in your pocket.